to the Chase Podcast, guys. Thank you again for listening. Another episode, and we're here, and we are here together again. Always appreciate of you guys listening. Subscribe, like, and share. YouTube, Spotify, Apple Podcast. We are everywhere. So, I just wanted to get back on to the studio. We're here at WFN Studios. Also, shout out to at Panama Side for allowing us to you know, give you content every week. So I'm going to be honest with you. I have no real reason why I led this podcast with a very, very deep voice. Like I'm, you know, Jodeci, um, you know, Casey and Jojo. Sometimes you just, I feel like talking low gives the impression of intelligence sometimes. When you have like a deep voice, you ever heard those old time radio hosts late night? They just talk very low. I always felt like they were smart because they talked low. Watch out for people who talk low. That's all I'm saying. I um, <clears throat> Hopefully you guys are out there, you know, still working out, still getting healthy, walking, whether you punching bags in the na- in the in the boxing gym or you are you know walking taking a walk stretching hopefully you guys are staying active um it's gonna be an interesting episode today well i'm gonna talk about a couple things gonna have nikki i'll always chime in and figure some things out i i've been kind of experiencing and sensing some things from people that um, that they don't know that I've been noticing. And it's always, I've always had a hard time kind of explaining to somebody that I care for that their behavior towards other people is starting to, to take a toll on me. So if I can be a little bit more clear I don't know if you guys have friends that you feel that sometimes that they that they're not like behaving in a way that you feel is uh, matches up to your, I guess, acceptance or whatever the case may be. But I don't know. I'm just seeing like a lot of people having a um, exposing their narcissist. Like there's a lot more narcissists now, I feel like. I feel like there's a lot more narcissism going around with people and I don't know. It's, it's starting to get, starting to get a little annoying. <laughs> you know, I have a friend that I feel like I want to tell him like, yo, you're starting to be a narcissist, dude. You got to fall back on this stuff. And I don't know. They narcissist always has a way of pushing back to make you feel like it's, it's you. That's what narcissists do in a weird way. You know, they can't really take acceptance of someone telling them how they're acting. You know, they get angry quickly, you know, common, common traits. I mean, everyone has a certain level of narcissism. I mean, look at me. I'm a comedian. Like, of course, I I want people to like me. (laughs) I don't even think liking is part of being a narcissist, but everyone has a level of narcissism. I believe narcissism is a spectrum. Everybody has a little bit of it and there's a lot of people who have a lot of it. And where do you fall in in that is really up to you to determine, but is it though, or is it up to other people to determine and to tell you? So, but I guess, I don't know. I just felt like leading in with that, with that on this episode, because I've kind of, been really thinking about not telling people anymore that they are an asshole. (laughs) I'm going to be honest with you. I've been loving it up until this point because there's nothing better than telling someone that they're wrong and that they're an asshole. I love it. It gives me great joy. It's actually better than me opening Christmas gifts. Like when I know someone is, just being a real ass and they're not accepting that they're wrong and then you you prove you like you 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 told them that they're wrong or you proved to them that they're wrong 
and they just look at you with that 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 face like they just found their cat shitting in their bed i love that face sorry you know what this is what i also thought i maybe i'm starting to think i need therapy i'm gonna be honest with you because <laughs> some of the things i say i'm like man these are these are things that i need to kind of unwrap unwrap here mr abel um or i could just have a podcast and talk about it and just figure it out along the way and save $95 an hour. I'll take door number two, Alex for 1000. Thank you very much. Save $95 each session. (laughs) Or maybe I could become a therapist. How about that? Someone told me that one day, someone said, Hey, Chase, man, you kind of, you know, you talk about some cool stuffs here and there. You have some wisdom. I'm like, first of all, if you're listening to me, I don't think wisdom comes out of, I don't think that's the first thing that people recognize me for is wisdom the way i talk i have three words that i just sort of recycle around and i put them in every single context of phrases and it makes no sense so please spare me the you know but anyways he was being nice but he's like yeah you, he's like i would even pay for you to get your license and i said first of all you could do a lot more better with your money number one and i wouldn't be the first thing i would tell you to spend that money on for me <laughs> I'm like, save that $50,000 for that psychology license or whatever the case may be. See, that's the thing. I don't think there's a psychology license. See how stupid I am? I think that's like you go to college. No, you do get a, ah, see, there's a license, a licensed therapist. Yes, but I think you have to go to college first. Shit. I'm sure there's like a, like, I'm sure like, what is it? Phoenix, hooked on Phoenix. What is that, that thing? Hooked on phonics. No, no, Phoenix, online Phoenix internet thing that the University of Phoenix, Nikki coming in in the back with the alley oop. Thank you. Uh, There's a hooked on Phoenix like degree I can get in like four months, right? I'm sure there's like a program or certification I can accelerate. Oh, you know what? Somebody, okay, so I lied the other day. I told somebody I went to Harvard Business School. I, I won't, I won't like, it's, it's such a long story. But anyways, I lied and I told somebody I went to Harvard Business School. And then I, the reason why I said that, because they were, at, they were saying that they couldn't get into Harvard. And then I was like, I just felt like just joking. I was like, yeah, I got into Harvard Business School. And then the person said, oh, the extension school. And then I got offended. I don't know why I got offended. I never went to Harvard. But why am I getting offended that he thought that I went to the extension school? And at first I was like, oh, he's because he was, you know, he's a white guy. And I was like, oh, he's trying to like make he's just trying to say like I can't get into Harvard because so I started getting that. I started thinking about that. And then I started thinking about other reasons why that he think that he thought that I just went to the extension school. If for people who don't know what Harvard extension school is, it's just, it's a program that I guess Harvard created where people who don't go into Harvard are able to take certain programs. I believe at night that, I don't know, makes it seem like they go to Harvard, but it's not really a Harvard degree. But I told him I went to Harvard. He said, Oh, you meant the, you, you go to the extension school. I got mad at him for saying that I went to the extension school. But the real reason why I was mad that I, that I later, that I later realized was that, Oh, because I'm stupid. There's no way I'm going to get into Harvard. He's absolutely right. I could never get into Harvard now. No way. So that was really just a, a segment that I really just want to really just complain about absolutely nothing. What I've said up until this point on this podcast, on this episode, has absolutely been nothing and full of shit. No substance, n- just no, just ugh. But I apologize, and we're going to keep going. Hopefully, this podcast episode gets a little better. Nikki Neighbors will join in. Drew will join in, in a little bit. Um, I've been kind of, um, I realized that I need to buy new clothes. I realized the other day that I really don't have any fashion anymore, like any fashion sense. I used to have a lot of fashion sense, but 
ever since I became a comedian, I've just been wearing just regular clothes, just, you know, T-shirt, jeans type of guy, you know, shorts, T-shirts, sneakers. You know, I'm very, very casual now. I don't really dress up. And if I do dress up, it's just like a nice T-shirt with jeans and really cool sneakers. Uh, but I need to... I was just thinking, I was looking at my closet. I was, I have no real dress shirts. I don't have dress pants. I don't have dress shoes. And then I thought to myself, well, you don't go to places anymore that require these things. So why do you need it? And then I also thought to myself, well, I should have a few things in a closet just in case something happens. So I'm really looking forward to going uh, this weekend and buying new clothes, you know, just a few, nothing crazy. But I don't even know where to begin. Like, where's what's what's the new fashion now? I'm seeing all bunch of people dressing up like crazy. You know, I don't know. There used to be so much fashion like back in the days. They used to people used to know how to dress back in the days. I feel like now people don't know how to dress. Yeah, people don't know how to dress anymore. A lot more casual attires now, which is fine because I'm a casual person for sure. So I'm not complaining all. The way I'm not complaining all about, I'm not complaining um, too much about it, but I mean, there's some people that I, I get on the train here in Boston to, to go to places, to go to gigs and to go to work and people don't know how to dress. They are awful. Oh, they have, they have no care in the world of how they're putting on their attire. And listen, I'm not a materialistic person, but I do believe you should put yourself together a little bit, have a little sense of pride, you know, put on some deodorant, a little spritzy spritz. If you can't afford some really good expensive perfume or cologne, put on some Axe, you know, get you, if you know, if you can wear open tail shoes or sandals, make sure your toes are done, you know, basic hygiene, you know. Just the basics. I mean, I'm getting on the train and the bus with these people, these savages, these, 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 you know, immoral cloth wearers. Oh, what a great word, by the way. Immoral cloth wearers. It's not a word, but I felt it. People not knowing how to dress is really, really annoying me. If anything, if you don't know how to dress, just wear this, just wear all black. You know, just wear all black like Nikki Neighbors does. And, you know, I'm wearing, I'm seeing people with no fashion sense anymore. Back in the days, people used to have fashion sense. They cared about how they look. So, but I am going this weekend to buy some new clothes. I don't have any dress shirts. Yeah. Nikki, when able just walked in. Yeah. Nikki, I'm, I need to, I lost my way of fashion and I need to get back on the, on track. So I'm going to go buy a suit this weekend. I got to buy one suit. I'm going to buy one suit. Um, I don't know what type of suit, but I can buy one suit for work. Um, and then I'm going to buy some clothes. Um, I don't know where to start, you know, this and great segue for Nikki to come in and to, to see if I can, maybe you can help me with some ideas. This is where I, this is really my sweet spot. Okay. Hey everyone. Um, Nikki neighborhoods in the building. <laughs> I need help. SOS. Dude, you got what kind of suit you, what kind of suit are you going to get? What do you, what kind of suit do you want? Let's start there, and then let's work our way backwards. Okay, so my work gives me two suits already, so I'm not gonna get a. I'm not gonna get okay black, blue, black not get suits. navy blue. They gave me two navy blue suits. So I'm oh, like, okay. So I need to get. I always feel like you always have to have a navy suit. You gotta have a black suit. You gotta have a gray. Yep. So those are the three. So you have two navy blues. Already, you said they're on order. I don't have them just yet. Okay, that's great. Uh, yeah, get, get get like a nice gray, like a charcoal gray okay. suit. Okay. Be careful if it's light gray. No, I don't like I don't like light gray. Yeah, I want the. Tr- I'm more of like more of the on the, hey, no, on the charcoal darker side. Yeah, dark, charcoal dark, side, dark, darker side. Boom. So. Then I would go black. Black suit. Just, just okay, okay. Simple, and then shirts, white, or blue. Okay. That's yeah. it. Some people say cream. Uh, yeah, I don't really okay. rock with cream. Sure, sure. You don't want to look like a pastor. No. <laughs> That's no, the last thing. I do not want to look like Crefto Dollar. <laughs> I don't want to look like a guy. Would it drop? That, yeah, would it? Yeah. 
I'm giving you I'm giving you God, but I'm also taking a private jet. Yeah, but I'm also don't want to look like a pastor who just got robbed as yeah. well. That's been happening recently. It's like keeping it too real. Yeah. You got to go those three. You go to a place like J. Crew got it has good suits. Mm-hmm. Suits are great. Suits I want, make I you want feel. light. I need a light suit. I want it light. I want it to be. I want it to contort to my to my physical. Sure. You know, I want it to be like a stretch type of thing where mm-hmm. you know it's light. I want double. I want to plant the the panels. I want the panels. You go. This is my suit order. Here we go. Okay. Here we go. I go, and it doesn't work for everyone. You gotta have the body type. Double breasted is tough. I don't. I don't do double breasted. Single single breasted suit, two buttons. You do if you. I like a wide lapel. Oh. A notch lapel. You could also do uh, one that goes up. I forget what those are called. Peak. Those are called peak lapels. Mm-hmm. And then the vents out of the back is what is what they're called. You want a you want back vents. You don't want the center vent. So when I said back panels this whole time, that's not the correct word. It's vents. I'm pretty sure it's vents. Yeah. yeah. Just want to let you know, no one's ever corrected me. I've been saying back panels for years. Well, I think some people call it back panels. I'm not one of those people, but I do think that that's something that you, you could get away with it. All right. And, and, then, I, and then I'll do, um, uh, once I get that done, I'll do the pants. I like to do... I, I like to I, I have gone from my last suit to this place called Suit Supply and you can actually get measured and all the stuff there and they make it. Ironically enough, that's where we get our suits from. Yeah, they're great. They're great suits. Those are the ones. Those are the suits I'm getting. They're not cust. They're not like um, you know five thousand dollar or ten thousand dollar Tom Ford suits, but they're also not your mm-hmm. off the rack at Macy's, which is nothing wrong with those. You can actually find some great suits there, um, but Suit Supply is the perfect. In between, luxury. And yeah, I'm not gonna flex, but you know we, I, you know we have like a we have a we have like a person that, that handles our contract. Yeah, and he measures us, and he comes and yeah. he does it all that. So <laughs> I don't like how you. I, I, and I'm gonna hit. I'm gonna say pause before the pause, but I don't like how you kind of pursed your lips after you said that in a way to mm-hmm. be like so put that on the table. That's what we have our own. What do they call seamstress? We got a few peeps, <laughs> but that's what you do. You go yeah. like that. You go simple. You don't do a cuff on the pants. I oh. I like to do a hidden a hidden um, straight leg. Yeah, I'm a straight leg right yeah. over right over the shoe. A nice yeah. clean, clean. Even when you clean when, break a clean break. Yes, uh. yes, a clean break. Even when you're sitting down, you can see a little bit of the socks, but not too high where it's above your shin. But uh-huh. just you know a good nice. A nice clean look. That's like what you do. Sleek look. Sports fit. Sports fit. Like a sports fit. Yeah, maybe. I, I think you just try them on. See what see what fit, see what feels yeah, good right. for you. Well, I thought I had a sports body. That's why I said sports fit. But well, I think fine. you'd like to be a first round draft pick. But I I think at the end of the day, you and I are both mm. Um, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. undrafted free agents. Great, great answer. Yeah, we are not first round draft picks. Uh, when it comes to the game of suits, we we need to we need to realize that hey, we're respectable. Yeah. Okay. We played at a low level Division One Appalachian State. I I will take it a step further. For me, I'm an just undrafted person in life. Yeah. Like, <laughs> like I've never been the first choice really for anybody. Like in terms of, <laughs> I just I was always with one of those guys that's had to just prove myself for every little thing. Yeah. And, and you're it, better for it. Thank you. Yeah, you're Thank better you. for it. Thank you. I would never dress. I would never dress like a first round draft pick. Like the like like when you see like the NBA, they do those first round draft picks. It's too loud. I don't. Well, think, now they are. Yeah, yeah for I sure. I, I, it, it doesn't. I, it's it's the total opposite for me of of how I would present yeah. my. Yeah. Well, some of these young kids, man. They're. They, I mean, I hey, give them credit good for them for their create. You know their reach. Like their 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 creativity reach and then they're they're thinking outside the box and that's cool. I'm always like for a little flair, like a little, you a little know, flair, flair, you know, a little flair. Yeah. But some of these kids, I don't know what this weirdo shit that's going it's on. It's like a it's like it's like a fucked up Power Ranger like look with the with like the cross belts and all this other shit. Yeah, just, I don't know why I need to see someone looking like the captain from Gilligan's Island. Yeah, with the gold with the chain with the gold chain from one button and it goes down to the like the to the to the to the vent like it comes over why do you look like captain fucking crunch it's concerning 
it's concerning. I don't know who's advising these young men, uh, but they're not doing a great job. They're not sending them to Suit Supply, that's for sure. No, no. Go to Suit Supply. It's great. Yeah, they have, then, I like the suit. They have a good clean suit. Got to have a clean, clean suit. So navy. I'll go a little gray. I'll go charcoal gray because I could go white, blue. You know. Now are they? Um, are the shirts being provided as well? Yes. Oh, okay, great. Suit supply shirts, some of the best in the biz. Yes. If you wanted to get some of your own, uh, I have a good a good place where you can get them to. They're, they're nice. pretty inexpensive. So nice. Nice. that's the thing, man. You need you need good staples. I think when you get to a certain age, you can't dress like. Yeah, you were used to dress when you were, you know, yeah. fifteen. 20 I was telling, years old. you know, I was saying earlier in the podcast, and I uh, saying that, you know, I I'm so casual. I've been so casual for so many years now. I've lost my my a little fashion sense a little bit, so I don't know where to like kind of start anymore, you know, because everybody has their own eclectic fashion thing now. Mm-hmm. You know, I never really tend to be a follower with fashion. I kind of always had my own thing, but I mean. I I got to step it up a little bit now, you know. I mean, you know, it feels good. Yep. Feels good to dress nice. It does. I think so. Yeah. I always like suits, though. I was a suit guy. I especially, like, I always like suits. I don't know. I like suits. When you put on a nice suit, you feel good. It'll feel powerful. And, you know, in your own way, you feel, like, confident, you know. I used to, I remember when I used to have no job, you know, we talked a little bit about being unemployed. And I remember me not being not having a job and being unemployed for a while, and I used to be depressed and stuff. And I would actually put a suit on as if I had a job, and I would just go to downtown all day and just like walk the streets. That's like the shit they used to do in the depression. I did that shit. <laughs> I had to do that shit. Like I just that's my mom was like, "What are you doing wearing a suit? Like you have no like this, you don't have a job. Where are you going?" Yeah, but she didn't know. That it was a way for me to like, I use it as a way to kind of just network, recycle myself out, yeah, oh, and, yeah. And, and 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 kind of just like network and yeah. just and just be like, knowing the fact that like they had no idea I had like seven dollars in my bank account, <laughs> and I snuck on the train, and I was a loser. And you're like, how am I gonna get back? And I have to get back to something. Yeah. So suits, I've always had like an appreciation for suits. Suits are great. Yeah. I I have a bit, I have a joke that says, you know, even poor people, like if you want to, don't want to look broke, just put on a blazer. Yeah. Throw a blazer on. Not a, yeah. Not even a full suit. Just a blazer will get you somewhere. Just throw a blazer on. Yeah. Anytime you throw a blazer on, it gives the illusion that this person is like, has a, you know, even poor, like a poor, I was poor for a long time. So people who thought like I had money, Mm -hmm. sorry. Is what it is. <laughs> it's plain and simple. But it was a good like blazer though. Plain and simple. It's like a Calvin Klein blazer. Love it. Yeah. I love it. Yeah, I used to get like the Kenneth Cole suits Ooh. from Macy's, buck twenty, buck fifty. Yeah. Nice suit. Nice suit. Last year year. You know what suit I really want to get when I have when I get like real money? I want to get a uh, Hugo Boss suit. Yeah. Yeah. Like a nice tapered Hugo Boss suit. Yeah. You know, um, I used to have a friend. Well, I see or not used to. We still have friends, but we, we don't talk as much as before. But man, this brother, he just knew the suit game. He got his suits tailored. Some guys do that. Then, and, and they know and they can get so many and they have so many suits. And he was a work. He worked out. So everything was like just fit. fit. It was just a nice fit. Yeah. You know, and he just he looked good in a suit. Yeah, he was. He was one of those. I don't I look. I look good in a suit. I look kind of look like if depending on how much. You know where I'm at in my weight. I'll I'll either look legitimate, you know, like someone you could buy something from, mm-hmm. or like a restaurant owner. I was gonna say you also look like a network producer. Yeah, ABC. Who's got to get to his kids thing where it's like, all right, come on, do the five minutes. Let me see the thing and then let me get out of here. Yeah, you definitely look like the head of like programming for children's on ABC. I feel like, like <laughs> yeah, I feel like a network <laughs> producer sometimes when I walk into rooms where I'm like, like who's the head of programming for children? Get the show. Oh, let's go. Come on. I have somewhere to be. I'm here so this thing can start. Yeah, yeah we got a couple of Barneys already. Let's go. Hurry up. It's like my whole life. That's you'd how I like, feel. You'd be the person, like, if you were a Hollywood guru, if you were, like, that Hollywood guru guy, like, the producer guy, and if you were, like, a guy in Hollywood, mm-hmm. whether you're a producer, executive, something, you'd be the guy that would be always at the fucking main big wig parties, but you hate every single fucking party. That's, like, every time I go to a party. <laughs> 
I'm there because I know I need to be there, and I'm just like, oh god, I want to go home. Yeah, that's how I feel now. On it, sometimes when I go and I go out to things where I'm just like, I'm gonna, I'm gonna make the best of this, but God, I can't wait till we get out of here. Uh, I what, when's the last party you've been to? <sighs> last party I went to was was I think uh, my friend's party it was like in July. My friend DJ the party was at our house. Nice. You know, nice house party. That's fun. That's different though. But That's you're saying like fun. a party, like what, what, what party? I don't even know what the fuck kind of party I would go to like that. Like a networking event. Oh, That's, a networking event? I was always, or like after, you know what it is? Networking events, after work drinks. That's why I stopped going. Because I'm like, I can't, never, I I'm not gone. doing after work drinks anymore. I haven't gone to those things and I don't even know how long. Yeah. Just, I, geez, that's a great question. I don't, I don't even remember. I don't even remember. It's been a while. What's the key to a good party? Good music. Number one. Yeah, it's the music has to be good. It's got to it has the mat. It's got to be good music. Second, um, I would say a good host. Yeah. No one really hosts anymore. It's tough. It's kind of like common. You know, I, I hate when I hear like. Do whatever you want. Oh, bring your own, you know, BYOB and, you know, whenever you want to stop by, this is when we're... It's like, no, no, no. It's being a lazy host. No, 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 no. You tell me when I need to be there. I'll bring in something regardless. Yeah. But I also expect you to have something there for me. (laughs) Of course. That's goddamn right. Um, Because you know what it is? My, like, for me especially, I come from a culture where, like, we didn't... We never asked. If you had a... If we were hosting a party... It was the responsibility of the person who's telling people we're having a party to supply everything. Uh huh. That's just the culture we came from. Mm-hmm. And then people would bring in their stuff on their own. But my mom never. My mom would tell you to keep it as it's coming through the door. That's hysterical. <laughs> I love that. She, she, she would like look at it as like a disrespect. Like she's she's like, what do you bring in? You're br- what do you? Br- I have everything here. What do you bring in stuff for? Just come and ha- just come and be yourself. Mm hmm. Oh, hospi- hospitality in the Eri- Eritrean culture is fucking for real. I just think it's lost. It's a lost art. Oh, yeah. I love hospital. I love, uh, come on in. We'll have a drink. You know, what can I get you? What, what do you need? Yep. You know, be Coffee, comfortable. tea, panatone. <sighs> oh, my mom l- was given panatone like it was Oprah giving out new cars t- to her, to all her audience. She had one every single area of the house. Yep. So, you know. What do Games? you think we get back to it though? Maybe we, I don't know. You think it would ever get back to it? Oh, parties, hospitality, like uh, people like. Being, I mean, this, being good hosts. What, what what examples do they have? What examples do people have of good hosts anymore? You know, I think if it's not in the confines of like a family construct or culture construct, I don't know what else. But that's what I'm saying. Like, say you're 15 years old. Are people now? You know, in their in their forties or fifties, now having people over their house anymore? No, they don't want no one. No one wants people over the house when no. you're that age. At that point, if you're no. <laughs> as the older you get, the more people you don't want to see. <laughs> no one wants that interaction anymore, because the dynamic of a good party is not always perfect. That's the thing. Great parties will always have a thing where you're like, oh, the fucking AC cut out again, but it's okay because everyone's having a good time. It, it's outshadowed by all the other good things. It's almost, it's almost makes the other things better because you're all, you're all fighting for the same thing. And there's a little, you know, yeah. there's someone at the party who's a little bit rude, but everyone's like, oh, he's an asshole. But it's kind of fun. <laughs> you know, it's kind of fun that he's just like, keeps bringing up Trump and you, and everyone's just like, yeah, okay, Gary. Shit. Enough. But keep feeding him alcohol. Let's see what happens here. <laughs> that, that's a great party. Yeah, I just, yeah, I just, but there's also people that I know that they're really good at knowing how to throw a good party. There's some people that just, they, because they love it though. Mm-hmm. I feel like in order to be a great host, you really have to love it. You do. It's part of you. You want to serve. You want to make sure people are taken care of. I know a few people like that. I mean, what's his name is a huge on that. He's known for that. Uh, Diddy. Oh yeah. Diddy. Like that's just you what brought him up. Like 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 I'm like I know him. Yeah, I mean we're not. Like all he's perfect. a mutual friend. I know. I mean you're not. <laughs> you don't get out. You don't get out. You don't get out much. Nick. Yeah. No. No. I mean that's the only party I would go to. I'll be honest. Is like a Diddy party. 
Diddy and Martha Stewart are the only two people that I, I'd say still know how to throw a party. Oof. Martha Stewart, really? Yeah. Oh, God. Really? Yeah. I, don't, I couldn't imagine her. She's hanging it. out with Snoop now, and she's just, I think she's picking up the best aspects of Snoop and the best aspects of, like, mm. hosting. Like, I think she was already a good host. Did you really want to say she's experiencing Snoop? Or did you want to say... What did I want to say? She finally met some black shit. <laughs> and, and that's why she would throw a perfect party. Because she's an unlikely host <laughs> to a diverse crowd. You would just think waspy white people like to go there and get her homemade jam and do all this bullshit. And you're like, oh, wait a minute. She's hanging out with Smooth. She, she's 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 smoking a little bit. She's mm -hmm. drinking a little bit. She's like, becoming more cooler. So we're doing fun things, but we're doing it in an impeccable home. She's doing it much cooler. Yeah, yeah. in a beautiful estate. <laughs> right. You know, right. same as Diddy. I mean, Diddy's parties. You can be in a yacht. You can be on land. You can be on water. Yeah. He's probably Jesus. Who knows? I think they both did the same thing for the for the opposite culture. They made it. They they blended their party styles. If you was, let me give you this. If you had one person you want, you could party with in any um, era, uh -huh. who would it be? JFK. First of all. No question. Holy shit. That was very quick. Yep. Number two, I kind of, I will accept that answer because mm -hmm. not only because the way you said it so quickly, but the way your legs are crossed. Yeah. <laughs> I felt like that's how JFK would cross his legs, yep. just like that. I feel like you've seen that picture on a poster, and now you're repli replicating. And how that's how crossed. I sit. That's yes. my posture now. That is a JFK pose you got right there, by the way. JFK is great. Why JFK? Well, because he does all the fun things under the protection of the Secret Service. Oh, so you want? You're never going to get in trouble. <laughs> so you want? So you want? Okay, you want? You want? You want something to defend your actions? Well, not even in an, not even in like a, oh, I can get away with you know being a horrible person. That's not what I mean. I mean like okay. who's gonna who's gonna kick us out of the hotel? It's JFK's party. Yeah, who's gonna? Yeah, who the president? Hey, this is the president's you know? party. Yeah, you, who's at the party? Frank Sinatra, Dean Martin, right. Sammy Davis Jr. See, my pick would have been Frank Sinatra. That's a good one. That's a good one. Yeah, uh, come on. Yeah, that's a really more good fun one. At a party? Well, see, I think they're, they're at the same party though. That's the thing. Mm, but who? And if it's JFK hosting the party. I think there's just a level of prestige there. But Frank Sinatra is also basically, depending on where you go, if the party's in Vegas, Frank Sinatra is a president of Vegas. I think Frank Sinatra was just as famous as JFK. Yeah. yeah Rec recognizable mm -hmm. as JFK. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, this is the thing. With a J this is what's happening at a JFK party versus a, um, a Frank Sinatra party. JFK party, pristine, very diplomats, top-notch caviar and wine. Mm-hmm. Jazz music. Yep. Good. Frank Sinatra party. Cigars. Yep. Hookers. Truth. Yeah. Singing. JFK. JFK would stop by Frank Sinatra's party. Yeah. So th that's my. That's your. You answer. might have the. You might. Yeah. 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 You might. You JFK might. JFK's coming to Frankie. JFK's coming to Frankie to get loose. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, he's leaving he his met party at, pro, at a JFK party. Yeah, he's leaving his party to go to JFK. I don't want to go to yeah. Frank Sinatra's party. All right, so I guess I'll see you at midnight then. Yeah, I think Sinatra might be <laughs> it. I think you might have it. I think both parties would be great. They both would be great, but I'm seeing you later at the party. I think both would be great. I think you would meet some pretty interesting people. I think you would meet some horrific people. Uh, but but horrific by the standards of the same way you would meet people today, where you go to a party and be like, ugh. Yeah. Ugh, mm -hmm. that guy. It's always a guy too. It's always that guy. It's like, oh, that guy. Yeah, it's always works a guy. for that company that takes all that money from people. There's one guy that I feel like. You ever seen Titanic? Uh huh. The guy, the, yep. the rich dude. Yep. The act, what's his name? What's his name? That famous actor. You got, we got to pull up his name. He was on Titanic. He's been in a whole bunch of shit. Yeah. Um. Is it Steve? Is um. I think he's French. I think it's like Steve Van Zandt. No, no, no. That was yeah. the Sopranos. Put, put like Titanic, drummer. like bad guy. No, no, no. It was Billy Zane. Billy Zane. Yeah. Yes. He played that really like slimy, kind of grimy 
rich guy on uh-huh. Titanic. He played that well, so he played that character so well too. Um, but yeah, I feel like those are the type of people that would be at those parties back then, mm-hmm. right? Yeah, 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 yeah. I think, I think they definitely would be. I think, I think. Well, you know, JFK was like, um, like, like a Brahmin. That's the uh, like the Irish. The rich, like the super wealthy families here in like Boston, they call yeah. them the Brahmin families, and it was just like you know, it was just they were criminals, really. Um, but they you they achieved it, a certain status. They achieved a level of you mm-hmm. know notoriety and success. There was no failing. The only way they were going to fail is if they were killed, which yeah. they were. Yeah, I mean, some of them killed other people. Got rid of it. Got yeah. away with it. I mean, look. Hey, you got you know I people. Think I, party, know people right? I think either party. I think either party. You know people, I know people. Hey. I think ugh, the Italian, the Italian impression. <laughs> that's something that. That's something that. What impressions bug you? <sighs> Ambiguous Lebanese crossover legs types. I don't know. Sorry, <sighs> sorry. Um, what? Hmm, what bugs me? What, what impressions? When people what do impressions. impressions I don't know. Um, that's a great question. What, what impressions bug me? Italian impressions bug me if they if they if they can't nail it. Okay. Jamaican impressions. If you can't get a Jamaican impression down, yeah, it's like it's. Oof, what are you doing, guy? Okay. What are you doing? All right. All right. <laughs> all right. But then if you can nail a Jamaican impression, yeah, because mine. there's cool running. Yeah. Well, there's that, and then there's the actual like the patois. Where it's like, okay, this they get the little the little, little idiosyncrasies. Idiosyncrasies. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, man. <laughs> mena, mena soon come. Mena, yeah. yeah, very mena much. Talk in my like Tom Hanks nails it. First of all, I'm fucking I mean uh, I mean uh, no, Did Chad you Hanks. just fucking Chad Hanks Did you You're not gonna You're not gonna just gloss over my fu- first of all, wait. I I did a patois impression. You went in, instinctively said Tom Hanks does a great impression. You d- deliberately ignored my impression. Uh huh. All right, Tom H- Chet he, Hanks. Chet okay, Hanks. Chet Hanks. Wow. Who? So there's gotta be. You gotta be. You gotta hear impressions and in, in, and be like, oh, so f- <laughs> yeah. This again. What's the funniest impression do you like to hear from somebody? <laughs> I love like Latin, like when someone does an impression of like someone from Latin America, Puerto Rico. I think those impressions are great. Um, I really, I think the hockey, hockey, imp- like people, you know how like Canadians talk with, about like hockey? Yeah. Like ripping, ripping darts and. Mm, nope, not puck not. bunnies and things like that. Definitely not. I don't fucking. That's what channel funny. is that? That's on okay. t- that's on TikTok. <laughs> I never. Oh, if someone does channel. a good Middle Eastern impression, I think that's hysterical. I think that's great. Okay. What? Well, yeah. Okay. <laughs> just. <laughs> <laughs> what are they just like my friend? My friend. <laughs> Welcome to Uber, my friend. Uh, everything's my friend. Want a cologne? Perfume? B- Perfume? Brother. Yeah. Every yeah. <laughs> Brother. Habibi, good a good Nigerian accent. Yo. Great. Oh yeah. Well, I was talking. Who was I talking with? I think you're talking. Like, oh yeah, Nigerians are just funny. Oh yeah, just so, good no, accent I, in general. Good. It's hard to do impression. I'm not an impression guy. I may be able to squeeze by here and there if I'm like, I'm able to, um, if I'm able to like, you know, just sneakily <laughs> get by. You yeah, know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I, I don't, I don't, I just don't work on them. Uh, it depends on you know if I'm if I'm smoking some of that devil's lettuce, maybe I can get by. Yeah, but I'm not an impressionist. People who do impressions are very talented. Frank Caliendo, I mean Godfrey, obviously he's uh-huh. fucking one of the best. Um, Jay Farrow. Um, there's some really other people that can really do some impressions, and they can go from character to characters. You know, mm-hmm. like I don't know, just people who do that. They just I don't. I wonder how their mind works. They probably their mind works at a certain RPMs. Like you just be like, how in the world can you just Going out of voices like that. Yeah, yeah. I don't see you as an like an impressionist. You don't carry the vibe. People in my life, I can impersonate. My I can do my mother very well. Mm-hmm. I can do pretty much anyone from Boston. Anyone from Boston, I can do. Um, and that's it. 
I think to do any other impressions would be a little yeah on the on yeah the, would, I mean it would be really hard to sell you to Hollywood I mean I'm not gonna say like, I mean but we'd, I'd, I'd work I'd work yeah hard. yeah I know you would you're all about the pitch you're all about the sell all about the sell you know it's, whether or not the product is there you know doesn't matter it's the idea you sell the idea yeah yeah gotta create this create this thing you know I could see you as a good actor. You ever thought about taking I acting have, classes? Yeah. I have. Yep. You have what? Thought about taking okay. acting classes, yeah. Okay. Absolutely. I feel like you have a certain um, aura and certain way of internalizing information and this kind of low, fun, not fun, uninterested... I want to be anyone else but myself. <laughs> <laughs> I want to be... A I feel like I was a producer telling you yeah. how you are. Well, comedians <laughs> want to be that just want to be themselves. Comedians just want to be themselves and be accepted and um, you know whatever. And actors want to be anyone but themselves. And I definitely have a little bit like I. I think characters. I think everyone's their own little character. Everyone has got their own little thing. Idios, idiosyncrasy. Everyone sure. has their own tragic flaw. Sure. Um, oh yeah. And I, I think that's fascinating. But it's funny you say that because my friend, one of my really good friends is a filmmaker. And he said that a couple of times. I would love to, I would love to act in something. Mm -hmm. I think that would be fun. <laughs> just something. I'm acting right now. Yeah, just something. <laughs> I mean, something. Just like Anything. We, maybe we should write something. You know, write a script. Yeah. Maybe we can write a script about just, just kind of like you. I think here's a script log line. It's me, two guys working at a rental car, a rental car company. Boom, like the like trying the to figure it out. Rental car company. Okay, mm -hmm. does one of them have a license or not? I probably wouldn't have the license, right? You'd have to work at the company. Yeah. How about if I worked at the company and lost my license, and I'm working at the company? Didn't where, tell them. And didn't tell them. Yeah. Plot twist. Conflict. Plot twist. The characters in the in this in the conflict is always the characters coming into the rental car company. Because no one actually goes to rent a car mm -hmm. that is all the way there. Like, like, like you're not renting a car if you're a stable human being. <laughs> There's the exception, you know, when you're on vacation or whatever. But, but you know, I mean, you think of, you think of the truly stable human beings in this world. And they're, you know, their family's picking them up or, you know, whatever. <laughs> Nine times out of ten. And I think the, I think the, I think the conflict will always be people coming in and having to explain what it takes to rent a car, right. having to go get the car when someone just doesn't want to give it back. That's yeah, I, you know. And I think I think this is something I lived in real life, having worked at a rental car Fine. company before. Let's, let's write it. Say we write it. You know, we write it. We both work. You know, we we deal with a supervisor doesn't know what she's what they're doing. They don't know, and they don't understand the cultural. Um, they don't understand where they're located. Like, they don't understand the community that they're serving. Right. And they don't really necessarily want to understand it, but they, but they do. So basically, our supervisor would be Saudi Arabian? Or like... Or like, like, a, like a person like, like, like in this like country. I could see like a heavy-set Jewish girl who's just like, I'm here mm -hmm. to make this operation run smoothly and then get promoted to go to the airport. Gotcha, gotcha. Yeah, we probably couldn't cast the Saudi Arabian now. No. Well, I would be the Saudi Arabian. Okay. Yeah. And we're in a community that, again, is very diverse. There's all different types of people coming in. Sure. Haitian, Jamaican, uh, um, uh, uh, people from Bali. I was going to say ba ba Bali's. Mm. What is what is that? What was the show? What was the show on you? On, on So this, okay, so basically we just pitched kind of the show a little bit. Um, I think the listeners will probably say our show will probably be seen on UPN. That's like the yeah. That's like that's the type of network we would. UPN USA USA. We're not going. Yeah. We're not going ABC here with this. No, we're not going N NBC with this. Maybe FX. If if we were able to get a really good director, I'm thinking more like Stars. Yeah. It's gonna have to be one of these. UPN. Yeah, it's one. Of, it's gonna be have to be like one of these uh, networks that people are just tuning in at night and they're just like, "Oh, who's these like idiots?" Yeah, yeah. And then becomes like an underground sensation. Yeah. Who knows? I don't think. I don't think Showtime's knocking on our door anytime soon. It's called Renters. <laughs> That's just Renters. It's Renters. That's it. 
What are you watching tonight? Oh, new episode of Renters. So basically, it's like a, it's a series about renters, the type of like type of human beings that that rent. Oh, so like furniture, discount furniture, people rent furniture shit. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. But it doesn't have to be. It takes place in a rental car place. Got it. Okay, because I think the rental car aspect there's. There's, it's so dynamic. There's so many different moving pieces that For you sure. can get a lot of good stories. You always lines. get the, or you always get that renter that's like, hey, they 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 re- they requested they have a reservation for a basic uh-huh. economy car, but they come in and they want to upgrade to like the sports car, but they want to pay like the same price. Mm-hmm. You know, and people don't understand what the word upgrade means. They're mm-hmm. like, they're like, you know, just I, I want, can I get an, I want an upgrade. You don't just get an upgrade. Upgrade comes with status. You you rent a lot, so you get an upgrade. So so people would come in all the time and be like, "Ah, uh, yes, I'd like an upgrade." <laughs> I'm like, I don't think you understand how this works. Right? Yeah, you haven't done shit. No, you, you just got off your fucking toilet today and just came here. You didn't earn this. No, explaining that to a to a man that doesn't speak Eng- good English um, and trying to do so. <laughs> That is true, allegedly. 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 Equal armor. A hundred percent. Equal opportunity podcast. You learn that lesson very, very quickly. Don't assume what you think someone else knows or doesn't know. Not in this country. Ever. Nope. Not in Brockton. Not since a month ago. <laughs> no, not in Brockton. I got baby. naturalized, baby. <laughs> but that's where it would come from because then you got you got the guys that clean the cars, you have the the area manager. That comes in, he's not in the office or she's not in the office all the time, but they run the area, so they come by. So you have that looming figure. Mm-hmm. Maybe he comes in and makes fun oh, of the. I used to work at jobs like that where yeah. it was like a like a regional manager uh-huh. that was a dick. Yeah, but they only come like you like you know that they're coming, but sometimes they'll be really dicks and do like surprise visits. Uh-huh. Oh, I hate those field managers that love their jobs. Yeah, those people. Yeah, lifers. Lifers, the lifer. They come in and they they nitpick everything that you've done. They haven't been there three months, uh-huh. but they'll find like I'm just like oh, I had one guy like that. His name was Justin mm-hmm. ugh, from Worcester. Yep. Yeah. I used to be a GM of a logistics company, like okay. a like a self storage company. Okay. He would like he he just got hired. Yeah. He was like on Wall Street. He failed because the fucking all you know, of them have failed at something pretty pretty major early yeah, on. Something. It yeah. landed them there. He had like four or five kids, like in yep. Worcester. Gambling. They Who? were all a lot of gamblers. <laughs> just coming in. A lot of gamblers. Coming in hot. Yep. Coming in like he's gonna fix everything. Yep. Thinking everyone in the in the branch likes him. Yeah. You know? Yeah. It's on like the, the intern or whatever. Like there's just always that there's that dynamic that you could play. Then you have the guys that clean the cars. And those were my favorite guys. Those were people that were generally from the area. Um, they could walk to work sure. if they needed to. East Boston? Um, East Boston? Oh, yeah. Okay. Um, and, you know, Chelsea. they would... Y- you learn very quickly that there's no difference between the manager of the, 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 the branch and the people cleaning the cars in these situations when you're dealing with the general public. <laughs> At the end of the day, though, you you'll re- you realize that because you see the influence that the people that are, you know. Yeah, doing the real job, real, real work. They're the ones where when a customer comes in and flips the fuck out. Yeah. Ha- diffuses the situation. Yeah, because they're coming in because, yeah, it's because it's come some dude that's like, yeah, I get it. You know? And then you got to go repo a car. You got to do this. Yeah. They know the ins and the outs. They're kind of the You'll be a, a one. You want to take a ride? Yeah. I got to handle Oh, I this. saw that car over the other day over at so-and-so's house. It's like, oh, okay. Uh-huh. Yeah. Wonderful. Yeah. <laughs> they may or may not, may you know, not know, when they so get in an altercation uh, with someone, pretend right. that they have a gun in the glove compartment and then gesticulate to the, you know, and make the whole, you know. Yeah. So there's, I, I think this is a real show. Listen, I'm, I'm in. I'm in. Let's cast it. Let's write it. First, we have to write it before we cast it. So I'll add my things to it. You add your things to it. Sure. You know, we'll see if we can fucking do something with it. Well, I, you know, I think that this is definitely something that we would. And when I say we, um, Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, my LLC or my production house would certainly get Mm -hmm. in contact with you about Mm -hmm. uh, Mm -hmm. as a talent. Uh, You know, if we were to explore production opportunities, you know, it would be. Um, Duffy Fan Studios, you know, something come. we would have to really sit down and iron out. Yeah, I'll be honest with you. There wouldn't be a lot of ironing or a lot of sit downing. Chase, you you're going to get me, paid X amount of money. Yeah. You're going to get paid literally a sandwich a day. Just yep. please show up here. That's I would it. tell you an hour early mm-hmm. um, than when you would actually have to be there. And you would show up and do a great job. Yep. 
Yeah, it's, that's how it would go. That's how it works, you know. And then you'll fuck me out of publishing royalties, and you'll make a <laughs> shitload of money. And then I'll fucking have this whole thing against you. And I'll be like, hey, I'm the one that fucking put on this fucker, and he took all my money. So that's probably like what, what every happened. racially ambiguous <laughs> producer or media executive. Just sign here, man. Just sign here, dude. Don't. It, yeah, three sixty. Just don't worry about that. Just sign the paper. <laughs> <laughs> I heard. I was listening. Man, I was listening to this podcast. Sometimes I, I like listen to like. I listen to all different type of podcasts, especially hip hop ones. Mm-hmm. And I was listening to Drink Champs. We're about to just go down the same rabbit hole together. Okay. So which um, one did you did you watch the Mace one? Oh I, no no no! Uh, I haven't okay. saw the Mace one yet. Um, I was about to, and I said. Wasn't that good. And then I was like, yeah, I was like, yeah, he's wearing a stupid hat. And I didn't want to like, yeah. I didn't click the button to see it. <laughs> I'm sorry to set this aside, but you would get deterred from something based off of a hat. I'm that guy. No, not going in there. Don't like the hat. Yeah, he's wearing the stupid Ugh. hat. I, I don't want to do this. So you were watching Drink Champs. I was watching Drink Champs and I saw the, uh, the Herb Gotti <sighs> episode. And I mean, if that's not, doesn't go viral, I mean... I don't really care about viral or not. I'm more about like substance and content. Uh huh. So, first of all, my personal opinion about Irv Gotti, I never met the man, obviously, right? And I always have an opinion about people, two types of opinions. I have the opinion that when I first, like, what, how you treat me, or if I see you, how you act to me, and the public perception of my opinion of what yeah, you yeah, portray, yeah. right? So, my public perception of my, my opinion of him based on his public perception is that. This dude is unapologetic about what he says and how he says it all uh-huh. the time. He's the type of dude that is about loyalty for real. And he lives and dies by that. Mm-hmm. And he wears his emotions on his sleeves. And he's one of those guys, right? He's kind of like a Kanye in a weird way. Yeah. He's kind of a Kanye. Not as successful as Kanye, I, but. I don't, I don't even think it's like. But yeah, not I even as. Ex- but not like. he can. can but he can. He's like, emotional. He's emotional more so than anything else. But. I mean, loyalty, whatever. Man, he was saying some stuff, and I'm like, this guy Dude, does he was doing give some a wild shit. fuck. Well, first of all, Drink Champs, phenomenal podcast. Sure. Uh, the video is, I think, my favorite because you can, you know, it's vi- the vi- it's really a visual podcast. Oh, it has everything. to be. There's no way you cannot have a visual yeah, podcast on the that. smoke and all the little the bottles and everything. Um, he was talking about Ashanti. He was getting into, like, 20 years stuff. He was like, he was Ashanti talking- bought me this watch. Remember the watch at the beginning where they yeah. took off his watch? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. What do you think about, like, people who operate, who, who, who are like him? What's, I, your, what's your, because Dame Dash, I feel like it has, like, similar characteristics of Irv Gotti. But These I, guys I, who are kind of, like, very vocal, like, like, they're not afraid to voice their opinion about things. They're not, like, traditional CEOs, businessmen, where they... Are calculated with their words. They don't say much. They only say things at the right times. What's your What's your thing? About I think it's a spectrum. I think there's a spectrum of of, of entrepreneurs, moguls, leaders, people like that. Um, I fall into like the J, more of the Jay Z kind of like he just Jay Z sits back yeah, and kind of just watches everything. Yeah, you're calculated, and he knows every and he hears everything. Yeah, and. He's very calculated. There's nothing that he does that isn't calculated. Um, but I don't know, man. I watched that interview, and I thought it, I thought some of it was a little sad. I thought some of it was a little sad. I don't think I would ever talk about my personal relationships like that on, on, on that in that forum. Mm-hmm. It's, it's bizarre. Especially, like, you don't know if she's got a boyfriend. You don't know what her deal is. I think she's still with Nelly. <sighs> Contra grammar. A lot of push-ups. Going down, down. A lot of push-ups. Yeah. Street sweeper. He's got band-aids. He, if shit goes down. Four-wheelers on 28s. Um, I don't know. I thought I mean, I mean, thought it was good. I thought Ja Rule was uncomfortable. <laughs> I thought Ja Rule was like, I've been in enough uncomfortable situations. I feel like Ja Rule's like, he's uncomfortable. He's like, but he's not like, he doesn't care. Like, I yeah. feel like he's kind of used to this. Like yeah. he's, he's used to that. And so he kind of either at some point long time ago made a decision like, hey, this is how he is. And this is like. I just, I'm like, just, it doesn't bother me because it's not me. I don't think I could be, I think if I had to choose like who I I like Dame Dash to me is someone who's like, I think promotes, I think he promotes independent thought. 
I think he promotes black culture. I think he promotes having full ownership of things. Oh yeah, he's always been like that. And he was like the first to do that because now everyone's like, I, I own, I'm, I'm, you know, which is good. I own my publishing, but like, well, starting I want to say he was business. the first. He wasn't the he was he, but he was a big advocate for that. I think he was a big advocate of yeah, that. He was a behind, he was a believer in that. He, I think he was sure. one of the first to be like, this is my own. I'm gonna start my own. No, no, those artists before him that started it, labels and things like that. Yeah, yeah just on a the, smaller to, scale. To the degree of like yeah, where he well, got, that's, yeah. It's Rockefeller, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. But he doesn't like, yeah, I don't know, just the way he rolls up. And his interviews are just so fucking funny because he's Same? so. Oh, yeah, he's believing it. Yeah. He's so um, alpha. Yeah. It's fucking hysterical. I yeah. mean, it's great. Yeah, yeah, there's that alpha, like there's like that thing, you know. That's like comes from, like, you know, from that. Where you grew up. Where you grew up. You know, Harlem. You know, just... There's just dudes that still live by that. They still... Yeah. I mean, there's a lot of them. I mean, I mean, to a degree, I don't... I'm not like fucking Dame Dash, but there's a lot of things I can relate to him. You know? I think just people just say it in different ways. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? He says it vocally. Some people say it through other avenues. You know? I thought it was a good... I thought it was a good interview. I watched the whole thing end to end. The drink Ir champs, the drink Irv Gotti, right? Yeah, I yeah. was just like, oh, wow. You could tell he's making some people uncomfortable. No one makes people more uncomfortable than Diddy when he gets drunk. I've noticed. Oh, Diddy, because <laughs> he gets a little, he gets a little touchy. He gets a little touchy, <laughs> and he and he says things where it's kind of like, uh, they don't look like they're into this. Yeah, well, you know. <laughs> They don't look Diddy's like he's on a very, very affectionate love tour yeah. right now. <laughs> Lately, he's on a, you know, he's on a, yeah. So, shout out to Diddy. That's wild. Sh Rock, we would love to be a sponsor, by the way. Yeah, yeah, we'd love to have you as a sponsor. Revolt, we what? could definitely have this net with this podcast on Revolt. That would be, yeah. Maybe we should do that. I know somebody at Revolt too. I by could the be, way. I could, I could do a little EFN co-host. You want to do that? We maybe pitched it. We pitched the idea. We would call it Cookies and Cream. What do we call it? Oh, God. We I mean, that's not. I don't think Diddy that's would like that name. One. Yeah, that's a rough one. Yeah, um, just just they're throwing paint against the wall, kid. You know? Um, maybe we'll work on that. But yeah, I thought it was cool. I mean, some of these some of these podcasts are really interesting. There's a lot of podcasts that are like, but um, yeah, but whatever. It is what it is. Do -do. Um, all the all the smoke is pretty good. I like those guys. And all the smoke is they gotten great. better. They gotten better. I like yep. Stephen Jackson. He's kind of like now asking like more educated questions now, uh -huh. which is good. <laughs> yeah. You know, I think my top five, I think my top five podcast shows that I watch coming from the person who's like the most least educated here, but that's fine. Well, <laughs> that's like, coming from, yeah, 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 yeah. I like um, the ones I've been watching recently. Math Hoffa has a no, I do who that is podcast. Who's you don't that? know who that is, battle rapper, and he has uh, it's called My Expert Opinion. Or something like oh, that. Okay. Yeah, that's cool. And yeah. they all sit in a barber shop and they all talk. I just like the way oh, that it's shot. Is that the one with like the, the everyone comes in like yeah. in the barber shop. Fat Joe was on it recently, right? Fat Joe was on it. Um, uh, Dezus uh, from Dezus Amaro. Mm -hmm. Or Nero was it Nero? Oh Hoffa, Amaro. yeah. Oh yeah, the uh, Math he's a Hoffa, yeah, battle rapper. Mm -hmm. yeah, and yeah. he has like a bunch of other battle rappers there. Murder Mook just did an episode. Uh, I didn't really watch a ton of that. Like I kind of the Fat Joe one was good, and then I watched like. I don't know if he had like Jim Jones on there. I just, I didn't. Oh, he's had like, he's had a lot of people. On yeah. There. yeah. So that's a good one. Um, I am athlete and the pivot podcast are kind of like dueling, but they, but they, but they yeah. both kind of scratch the itch of like yeah. athlete shit. Yeah. Um, Did they get rid of Chad Ultra Cinco? Yeah. I haven't seen him on an episode. Re I haven't seen him right. on there recently. Okay. He's probably friends with all those guys though. And so he just chimes in and comes in. On yeah. Him? I thought he started that podcast with him. No, no. Um, what's his name? Did the, um, the guy that always sits in the middle. I was Brandon Marshall. Okay. Brandon then... Marshall started it. So apparently Brandon Marshall started the podcast, had Channing Crowder, Fred Taylor, Ocho, and then like a revolving guest. Right. And then took it in a direction that they didn't want to go in. But he started it with his friends and tried to, like, not pay them the right way. Okay. Um, and they were just like, we're going to just go do our own thing. Oh, okay. All right. I think it's good that people see the conflict resolution and what happens. Like, it doesn't have to be a zero-sum game. 
Right. Like I am athlete is not better than pivot and pivot is not better. They're just, they give you similar things, but also the, like they're, they are like individual in their own Interesting. right. Okay. Well, good luck to them. I mean, yeah. <laughs> cut to chase podcast. Here we go. Yeah. <laughs> cut to chase podcast, you know, so we'll see how it goes. But I definitely think, you know, for us, we definitely should, you know, um, you know, once we get some things going, hopefully by next, you know, next month or two, We'll start, you know, we'll start doing our thing, you know, like the studio we talked about last night. Oh, we got a TV there. We can even put a monitor there. Oh, yeah. We could even say the, the uh, oh, yeah. when we do the thing, our, my podcast, we could put the screen yeah. for that. And then we have yours. And then put, switch it out. And switch it out. I like that. Woo! Build your own thing. I fucking love it. I you love know? it. See? Um, we didn't really, you know, they recently, did you hear that they are retiring Bill Russell's jersey all across the NBA? Love that. What do you feel about it? I feel great about it. Okay. I think I think Bill Russell is the greatest basketball player of all time. Yep. I think we talked about he should have a statue yeah. at TD Garden, but yep. Yep. He's the greatest basketball player of all time. Um, and I think he completely encapsulated what we want athletes to be. He was educated on social issues. He was in the middle of social issues that he advocated for. Mm -hmm. uh, he was a phenomenal athlete, oh, yeah. a basketball player. Mm -hmm. Then he would transition to be a coach yep. and, a, and an announcer. Yep. I mean, just a dynamic guy all around. So hats off. Yeah. I think he. I think that's the right. I think that's the play. Yeah, for sure. Hundred percent. What do you? Is what he about the first you? person, first player, all the way around? <sighs> um, in basketball. Yeah. Yes, I believe so. I think so, right? I believe so. Because I, I think Jackie Robinson in baseball is. Jackie Robinson, Wayne Gretzky, um, Walter Payton, I think, maybe. Okay. Maybe. Maybe. Yeah. Sure. I mean, we have, then, Google. we have Google. We could check it. Yeah. Yeah. And I mean, we've we got to have at least one fun, fun, yeah. fun <laughs> one, one fact on this fucking podcast. I don't know. <laughs> I guess you would say like. Yeah, I don't know if you would phrase it how you phrase it. I don't know. Let's see, retired numbers for at least. Yeah, retired NBA jerseys. Oh, he's the third athlete uh, to have his number retired. So Jackie Robinson, Wayne Gretzky, Bill Russell. Yep. Wow. So he's the first in NBA. Uh-huh. You think they'll do Tom Brady? No. <laughs> Nowhere close. No. And nor should they. No. No. Um, they'll do it for the, for the Patriots, for the Patriots. Oh yeah, 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 for sure. Yeah, number twelve. No, no. You know why? Because you know, because 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 NFL football is all about the money. You know. Uh huh. So if they just you know, do you know how many twelve? Like Aaron Rodgers is twelve, I think, too. Right. Aaron Rodgers is twelve. Yeah. Yeah, a bunch of people. Yeah. So it, they're they're. But it's it's the impact. Well, I just think NFL is more. Well, NFL is really driven by the the dollar. Like they're really, yeah. like, you know, they operate as a nonprofit, but they're not. So, I mean, well, they're listed as a nonprofit, right? No, I don't think so. Though they're listed as a private company. Are they now? Yeah. Okay. Well, they've always been. They've always been a private company. Oh, okay. Well, I thought I was trying to be fucking, you know, smart. And then, <laughs> who would you? Who would you? I think Jim Brown, right? Yeah. Yeah. Jim Brown, I mean, that would be great, a great one. Um, I think, like you said, it matches about I think impact, you know, uh -huh. of what that person meant to the to the to that organization. Um, I'll be honest with you, I think Michael Jordan's number should be. I mean, that's the second. That's the second one. Isn't that the truth? I think just like from what he's done to the NBA, like what, like, like if he was to say, oh, Bill Russell, Michael Jordan, you can't wear that number ever again. Uh -huh. I don't. I think most people are like, yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, totally. Like, because you look at people on what that Bill wear Russell it. did, and yeah. based on what Michael Jordan did, they both like elevated the game to where players are now where they are now. I think there's a bigger social aspect though that that warrants that. But no, Wayne Gretzky. I don't know what Wayne Gretzky's done socially. Well, I'm not really familiar with hockey, so I can't really comment. I just know like really really skinny white dudes knew that they could skate and yeah. fucking kick people's ass. So yeah. Wayne was like, yo. Like, Wayne was, like, smaller than, like... I don't know. He was in the 80s, right? Yeah, but, like, I think what I'm saying is, like... I think He's got he the most goals, right? Yeah. He's the greatest hockey player of all time. I think that's... That is been Oh, so you get, got to retire his... Yeah, retire yeah. his number. Yeah, yeah for and sure. I think by a long shot. Um, and I think that what I'm saying is, it's, like, the social aspect. Does the social aspect weigh into it? 
with Wayne, I don't know how he was like with like I don't never just follow, in general. I never followed him. No, no, no. I'm saying in general because I, I I think like he has you know, great you, hair. Yeah, handsome. His California kid. Yeah, looking good. Yeah, tough. I mean, he's a tough. Yeah, that's the thing when you look like a pretty kid. boy, but you also yeah. beat the shit out of people yeah. on skates. Yeah, he's tough, tough guy. And the greatest. I think yeah. he had some. I think I gotta follow some Wayne Gretzky stuff. I think he was a tough bastard. Yeah, yeah he was a tough bastard. Anyone that plays hockey. Because basketball, hockey, and it was um, what was the other one? Was Jackie Robinson? Baseball, yeah. Baseball, yeah. yeah. Jackie. Hey, you know, two blacks and a white. Yeah. Three blacks and white, actually. Gretzky, Bill. Oh, Jackie, Gretzky, Bill. Let me name the blacks first. I think that's let me find. That's how I kind of like star first. Jackie Robinson, Bill Russell. Oh shit! I thought there was another black. No another black. No. So only three, right? You did say three. Yeah, three. Wait, and two wait. of them have white names. Wow. I mean, is Bill Russ? I mean, Bill Russell. I, I mean, maybe. Bill Russell. Nice to meet you. I don't think that's his real name. Farmers Insurance. We're not going to go down. We probably can yeah. find out why that <laughs> might not be his name. But this is a positive <laughs> podcast. We're going to keep it. We're going to keep it. You know, there uh, could be some things. This would be some things. Yeah, we could be some things. But I, I liked it. Um, what do you think? And we'll just leave with this. Um, I mean, do you think? I mean, what do you think about the C's this year? What do you got? What's your pick this year? Just keep them. We got great additions. Brogdon. They're talking Gallinari. about your boy. They're still talking about your boy in yeah, the mix. They're going to. I don't should. like it. They should. You know what it is? They should. It's some sort of. It, they should. I'm glad people should realize how absurd it is. And, and the fact that you would trade him is, is ridiculous for someone who's 35 years old that leaves every other year. Every, he'll say two years. And if, then leave. If that. Um, no. You keep the team together. Yeah, you suck course, it up. Of course you do. You add the players that they added. Yeah. And then if you can make a trade, you trade a player with draft. You, you go heavy draft picks. If you, may, if you decide to make a trade, it needs to be... You need the angle. We cannot be paying retail for things. Like, we have to... Like, Danny Ainge... Danny Ainge was like my stepdad. He never bought anything for the full price that was on the tag. I saw him plenty of times just buying a black coffee from McDonald's. Exactly. Black. Yeah. Got, didn't go through drive through No. Went inside. Nope. Lived right. He, they worked out down the street from my house. So we need to get back to that where it's just like, we're not going to give you every, everything for Kevin Durant. Fuck you. We'll give you Marcus Smart and a pick. Yeah. No? Okay, go somewhere else. We'll yeah, well, figure something else out. I, like I said, he should have came here a long time ago when he had the when he was a free agent after Golden State. Yeah. I'm sorry, before Golden State. Yeah. That was the perfect time for him. They just drafted Tatum. We had uh Brown. You know? Yeah, but these guys are like they were, they're still in the rookie contract, like, you know, so it, they they Brady they should have got him like at that time. Yeah, but these guys are finicky, man. You never really know. You think you think it like it's two K. You're like, oh man, we should have, you know, they should have did it this way, should have did it that way. But like, you know, you look at Kevin Durant and he wanted to go specifically to Golden State. He yeah. wanted to be in California. He didn't give a shit about anything else. Well, you know? Boston is um, lately has been in the news with certain comments from athletes saying about playing here, and uh, you know, like LeBron went on public platform mm -hmm. said that boston's a little eh, not you know, fond of uh, certain things and that kind of like propelled yeah. some some uh, a narrative re i mean that's everyone's always, always a, said that yeah. everyone's always said that but when lebron said it yeah it was like oh like, yeah but know. like well at the end of the day boston people don't still don't give a fuck like no. that's what people understand like don't understand yeah. about like the rest of the country like Boston fans are still like you'll still get we don't know what the down fuck you're talking about. The street. Yeah, and we're just still we're still gonna fucking do. You know, I, Here's the thing: it doesn't affect Boston the, at all. The racial shit is fucked up. If if I, and and I say this, be, having gone to a lot of Celtics games, having gone to you know a lot of Red Sox games, sure. The, it, no it's, invite. By it's the way. different. It's different with the Celtics. So like. I'll hear fucked up shit. There's, there's a difference. Here's what bothered me about LeBron. You tell me because I've never been. Here's what bothers me about LeBron's comments. Well, first of all, he can think whatever he wants. Yeah, he's LeBron James. He's getting fucking heckled. Anything that you can think of, you're throwing at LeBron James. Sure. I don't hear a lot of racial shit when I go to the games, though. That's the thing. I'm also, my ears aren't attuned to it. 
you know, also balcony and seats are a nice little screen call. Yeah, no, yeah. I'm just saying, but yeah. like, yeah. so I don't want to discount. Like whenever someone says like, yeah. yeah, I heard some fucked up shit. Okay. You definitely did yeah. then. Yeah. Um, but I also think that he's kind of just like the way that he said it. I want, I, I think he like, he doesn't like Boston at all. Yeah. I, I, I think there's definitely a disdain there. I think he's like, and I think these players in general, it's like no one's really as hard as Boston fans. Boston, Philly, New York. Oh, yeah. You know? Like, really, we don't per- they get personal. Philly and Boston are the only two. New York appreciate. New York, like, will clap for Kobe Bryant, will clap for Michael Jordan. Boston and Philly will be like, fuck you. We never fucking liked you. They <laughs> booed Kobe. Sure. And, he, and because Kobe could have played for the Celtics, and this is how I know he could have, he respected it because he's a competitor. And yeah. he's a he's a yeah. he's a he's got that mentality. It wasn't his fault. Then Boston dropped the ball, of not drafting him. Oh, big time. So, but but yeah, I mean, I think it's I think it's fucked up that where athletes have been like, yeah, this is how, this is what it was said to me. And if it's racial, it's like that's fucked up. That 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 to yeah, me is like of, yeah. makes me makes me feel like shit about being you know from the city and like lo- lo- loving the city and loving the good parts about the city. But mm-hmm. yeah, I mean. Yeah, it's always has that. It's always gonna have that. Uh, that that um, kind of, I don't know. It's always gonna have that 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 reminding of. Uh, that it's always gonna have that. You and it's the saying? leftovers, man. It's like the leftover that mentality, that like trashy racist fucking mentality. It's like mm-hmm. the small amount of people that ex- you know exhibit that at a game. Everyone kind of looks the same when you go to the game, so they're trying oh, to just like throw this fucking whole places. Yeah, it's all the same. I Mo- feel the same way the, too. Most of, the, most of the, t- the ticket holders are not are not black people. Yeah, I it's mean, white people. Yeah. Period. And, 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 and you will have like black people, Latino people, like in there. But if you're looking at, at like a whole in terms of like the data, it's mo- the most of the people who drive the ticket sales yeah. are white people in Boston. Yeah. Why? Because there's more white people than fucking and than other people. Yeah. It just makes sense. But I don't know. I mean, when uh, when I go to a game, I mean, I haven't gone to a game in a long time. But well, no, I went to a game. I went to the fucking NBA finals. Jesus mm-hmm. Christ, I fucking forgot about it. There was none of that shit going on, you know. No, oh. and it's also great. It's just it's weird. Also, it's also weird that like people would still. Coffee has a joke about that. It's like how it's like it's interesting how people from the opposite race would make fun of the people who they're paying to watch. Oh, none of it makes sense. Yeah, yeah. yeah. None of the it's like, none of know, the psyche of the, that type of person makes but sense. They, I mean, they, there's evidence that they've done it. I mean, it's that's what's tough. Is that's like what's tough about it. You know, you hear like these isolated like incidences where people just say shit, and it's it's ha- it's been said. But yeah, I mean, yeah. There's always fucked up people that will fuck up shit for everybody. I mean, that's also, how it goes. But there's also a lot of fucking incredibly liberal people that go to those games too. Where if they heard someone say. Yeah, throw throw the end bomb out or whatever, whatever they would say. Yeah, I feel like people would turn around. I know I would yeah. turn around, not to grandstand or anything, but be like, "The fu- are you fucking kidding me?" This is one thing about people don't understand about East like East Coast liberals, like 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 li- not liberals, but people who don't like buy into that shit. Yeah, if you want to call them liberal, I yeah. just call them a human being. Well, yeah. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. But if you just want to say people, I don't know why people always attack like labels. They like labels, the labels, but like yeah, like whatever. But if you if you wa- if you want to say it in that contextual way we have tough ass liberals that do that's the thing that's the thing like we there's, there's people that don't buy like are not like racist and will fuck you up like yeah like i'm one of them yeah like, you know like i mean well there's also i'm just saying like you know if, I, if also, I saw someone who says that i'm like sticking up i'm like i'm not I'm gonna buy, i'm not gonna allow it to happen but i think the whole thing is is like any good decent person would there's, ma- there's mainly black players in the nba Thank you there's for pointing mainly, that out. There's mainly no, no, no. Well, let's just say what it is because I think we've been talking about it. But it's like at the end of the day, it's like as a black player, do you feel comfortable playing in Boston? Well, probably yeah. If you're playing in Boston, if you're playing in Boston, they love and you. and you're the home team, they love you. But if you're coming in, what what does that feel like? Probably doesn't feel great. But also, how do you separate that from the fact that Boston is just like we don't fucking care what your the color of your we don't fucking like you because you have that jersey on. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> because you're you're from Sac. You're, you're not even from, but that's how fucked up the fans of Boston. It's like De'Aaron Fox. You're from Sacramento. Fuck you. It's like he, he's he's just wearing a jersey, playing basketball. Yeah, he's just playing basketball. Chill the fuck out. <laughs> and you would. And here's the thing: they would lay down on a train track to get that player if they came to Boston and we started winning. Yeah, I just will. You know, I always will kind of have to. You know. 
when it comes to sports, it's it's hard to in sports it's hard it's it's in sports it's harder to accept racism than it is in the general world. You know what I'm saying? Like it's harder to yeah. ex, it's harder it's because to because it happens, but it eventually you you can't hide behind it at some point. It it comes out it gets raised to the surface at some point and it gets dealt with right away. I also think though that like yeah. I agree. I agree. To a degree. I would like to see more incidents that happen specifically in Boston, because that's what we're talking about. Not that players should have to do this. Any any player of color should not have to do this. But I think I think when I hear someone's like, yeah, Boston's a really racist place to play, it's like Okay, I, I, but like when something fucked up happens, it should be brought to the attention, and mm-hmm. people should go section eight, seat seven. This person's getting fucking tossed because that's unacceptable behavior. Yeah, like I think that that's some of the shit too, where it's just like, yeah, if Kevin Durant fucking tweeted about that or like fought, lodged a complaint with the NBA, but like you know, you're not, they're just gonna be like, fuck, no, fucking Boston. And just fucking go on to the next city. It's just yeah, like I must. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's weird. I mean, it's just, it's just you know. I, I mean, did I've that, been. Does, a, I mean, you know, I mean, I played sports, and I've never. I mean, I've, there was different times I've been to like different places that weren't like. But I don't know. It's weird. It's a weird thing. It's a weird thing. It's uncomfortable. It's uncomfortable. uncomfortable I guess more than anything else because I always will be a Boston guy. Always will stand up for Boston. You know. Um, I. I don't really like like to see those that part of Boston or see it, and yeah. I probably just like just negate it. I probably just don't, you know. Yeah. So there's more good parts to Boston than there is the bad parts, you know. So um, when you, you tell people from Boston, your people that you're from Boston, do you kind of clock their reaction? Yeah, I think like any other like peers. Yeah. Oh, Tampa, you from Tampa? Yeah, from Tampa, yeah, from yeah. Boston. Yeah, yeah. I mean, the only time that like I had someone, the last time I had, well. <laughs> I've always had like people be like, "Oh, how Boston is." Oh, well, I'll tell you right now. Most people who I met, I, you know what happened? This is what happens a lot. This is what happened a lot of the times when I used to drive for Lyft. When I used to pick people up that weren't from here, that were of color, they would they would they would mm. automatically tell me like they felt it. Yeah, because Boston is like very segregated than it is like. Yep. You know, it's not like New York. Yeah, sometimes New York you don't is have to like, say anything. Go ahead, sorry. Yeah, New York is like different. Like, New York is like there's people on top of you all the time. So you, it's hard. You know, it's you, it's like you got to like kind of like deal with people. Boston, you don't have to. Like everyone's like, you, you know, they hide all black people in one area pretty much. Mm-hmm. Dorchester, Roxbury, like, you know, that area. Mm-hmm. So you have all the majority of the blacks and you have Spanish in like this area or up north. Mm-hmm. And everything in between on the outskirts is white. Mm-hmm. That's basically Boston. Yeah. In a nutshell. You yeah. Know, Boston's no. like very diverse, but it's like more segregated than anything. So they've noticed, they, they, people from the outside coming in, they feel it. You know, when yeah. they go to downtown, they're like, I just, I swear to God, I just was, yesterday, I met a nice Jewish older guy on Newberry Street. I was like about to go home. Dude, he comes up to me. He was actually his son or his brother-in-law was wearing a Notre Dame t-shirt. I was like, yeah, go Notre Dame. I'm an Notre Dame guy. We're talking. His father, his brother, his father-in-law comes up. Seventy-year-old Jewish guy grew up in Queens. He's like, "Hey, let me ask you a question." And I was like, "Oh, I know he's asked some race shit." <laughs> you got that radar where it's just like hundred percent, dude. 100%. Okay, go ahead. Here we go. Yeah, yeah. What are you gonna? Yeah, he's like, "Yeah, it's like it's not that. Where's like, where's all the black people?" Yeah, he literally said that. Yeah. Seventy-year-old man, Jewish guy, grew up in Queens. Well, yeah, 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 yeah. He's like, "I grew up in New York. Like, we don't like, what yeah. the fuck, like, what the fuck is this?" I was like. This is what it is. We're more segregated than anything in Boston. White people in the middle. A lot of white people in the middle outside. Yeah. We all come in town, but we all go home to our areas. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's like, it's, and he's like, yeah, I feel it. He's like, how is it here? I was like, it's clean. Yeah. <laughs> it is a clean city. It's clean. It is it's a clean efficient. city. Yeah. People, things work. People generally get along. Yeah. You got your isolated incidents here, but people understand that the areas are the areas. They Deep. like the areas. And... He's like, all right. He's like, I don't get it. But he's like, all right. I'm like, yeah, I don't get it either. It's bizarre. Here's my Instagram. I'm a comedian. It's I told bizarre. <laughs> yeah, man. <laughs> Got to move in. <laughs> I plugged my Instagram. <laughs> yeah. You're having a life-changing conversation with someone yeah. about race in Boston. You're like, by the way, um, I host this podcast called the Cut to the Chase. Hashtag Cut to the Chase podcast on Instagram. Yeah. He's in Tampa. I told him I'll get some tickets to Side Splitters. Yeah. <laughs> 
I don't even play side splitters. Yes, sir. I don't know anything about that, but I'm going to be down at side. I'm going to be at Vinnie Brand's Laugh Factory or whatever, the, whatever it is. <laughs> and that's how you always end racism, ladies and gentlemen, with yeah. laughter. There it is. Cuts to the Chase podcast. We are here. We are always here. We will um, bring you another episode next week. I think that it is our time to go. Hopefully, you guys are having a good week, weekend, whenever you're hearing this podcast. Nikki Neighborhoods, what do you got for yourself? Sorry about that. Um, Pain of my Assad, check it out. And the Nikki Neighborhood show is going to be coming out in a couple of weeks. So check that out. And then go check out Cut to the Chase podcast. Um, video episodes are up. Audio episodes everywhere you get podcasts. And then just go follow Chase, obviously, at his uh, Instagram, at Chase Abel. He said it. I didn't. We're out. Love you guys. Peace. Peace.